On the Oregon coast, in the gated Surf Pines neighborhood, Ken Wiest has unusual house guests. We love it, you know. My wife and I absolutely love watching them out in the backyard and watching them play out here. And, and uh, it's, you know, it's not something you see everywhere. Herds of elk that are used to people roam up and down the coast, often relaxing in Weiss Yard. Just south of Surf Pines in Gearhart, Sarah Gage used to watch the elk walk past her beachside home taking pictures. It was magical for us. But in the last few years, something changed. And everybody noticed it, and everybody was in town was talking about what happened to the elk. We weren't seeing any elk. We says he knows what happened. He woke up to the morning gunshots as hunters shot 77 elk in his neighborhood in just over two years. Watch a mother get shot and watch how the babies cry for three or four days. Um, it's heartbreaking at times. There really hasn't been anything concrete that I've heard that makes any sense about any of this. The elk hunting in surf pines was legal, sanctioned by the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife as part of Oregon's landowner damage tag program. The state managed program allows people to hunt elk on private property if the landowner shows property damage caused by the animals. But where is the line? Is the compensation program being used correctly or being abused? From the spring of 2021 to the spring of 2023, Surf Pines homeowners Craig and Dana Weston reported property damage to ODFW, ultimately receiving 80 tags for hunters to kill elk. Any person with a valid Oregon hunting license can use one damage tag per year. I spoke with Craig Weston on the phone multiple times. He explained that elk had damaged fences and ate the feed for horses that they board on their property. He declined an on-camera interview, but said he's not planning to apply for more damage tags, in part because of the backlash that he's received. And Weston's neighbors, like Jim Alberg, have their opinions. You said this would have been like shooting fish in a barrel? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, big fish in a little barrel, yeah. I mean, give the elk a chance, <laughs> you know. Coming out here where there's a herd of 100 of them and getting on your knees and having your pick, that's not fair. Joe Surmeyer hunted on the Weston's property. He took a friend, and they took the elk meat home to eat, share, or donate. Oh, it was a great experience for me because I got to take a 90-year-old guy out there probably for his last one. Because after we were done, he said, this is my last one. I think that did it. How would you describe the need for a program like this? I've hunted elk here for 40 years. Uh, there, there's more elk in town now than there is up in the hills. You can't eradicate them. That's not the point. The point is, is you got to suppress the herd. You got to get it down low enough. On the northern Oregon coast, the elk damage tag program stretches well beyond surf pines. KGW requested public records on the damage tag program, showing who's using it and where. More than 600 elk tags were issued in Clatsop County alone over the last three years. Hundreds of different hunters reported successfully killing an elk, and 17 different landowners received at least a dozen tags. I talked on the phone with other landowners. One explained to me that he's a farmer who lives near a wildlife refuge and elk damage his crops and therefore his livelihood. He said he requests a few tags each year to use as a deterrent, and for him, it often works. Paul Atwood is a wildlife biologist for ODFW. He makes site visits to approve damage tags, looking for tracks, scat, damage to fences and agriculture. ODFW issues up to five elk tags at a time, but there's no annual maximum. It's using that as a tool to try to change elk behavior so they go somewhere else and aren't, and aren't in a position where they're you know, continually causing conflict. So in Surf Pines, what did you see to justify 80 tags in three years? You're looking at that in hindsight, right? I don't think there's like a, a magic number there where it's like, you know, this is, this is what's okay and this is what isn't. I mean, I think you have to balance that with, you know, the size of the population and the amount of damage so in that way, you'd, you'd issue five tags. Mm -hmm. Landowner would say there's still elk here. You'd issue five more tags, still elk here, five more tags. Yep. That's kind of how it worked? Kind of how it works, yeah. Did at any point you say, hey, this is getting to be a lot of tags, or did it feel it was always necessary at that point to you? It's pretty routine for us. Like it really wasn't uh, out of the realm of what other, you know, properties that have big conflict. There has been talk in the community about trespass fees, a way for landowners to charge hunters to shoot elk on their property. Elk meat is valuable, and trespass fees could turn damage tags into a profitable business. But Weston says he never charged anyone. Hunters say they didn't pay for access, 
and Atwood says ODFW would shut that down. Are landowners allowed to sell tags to hunters? No. I mean, the point of the program is to, re is to reduce damage and conflict on private land. It's not, and from my perspective, it's not to, you know, allow a private landowner to make money off hunting. And if you heard of that, what would you do? Stop issuing tags. Atwood says ODFW is running the program as the state legislature intended. I think the idea that um, elk populations are in trouble in Clatsop Plains is just not true. Neighbors like Alberg say they don't buy ODFW's explanation, feeling the state is too lenient in handing out tax. They say strongly this is not a culling, but in effect, does it feel like that to you? Yeah, it does. And I think it does to others too, just because of the number and the relative size of the herd. Sarah Gage believes a one-size-fits-all model across the state doesn't work. This damage tag program, do you think it was used too broadly? In this case, it certainly was. I think there are, reasons, there are places where it's appropriate. Uh, in this case, it was just severe overkill.